I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences and giving you my optimized settings. Now this game is extremely GPU and CPU heavy as well. So let's check out the CPU limited performance on a modest Ryzen 5 3600X. I'm using CPU limited settings at a 50% resolution scale just to emphasize the CPU performance. And as you can see, the performance is absolutely abysmal. This CPU will not reach 60 FPS even if you try. The performance averages at around 40 to 50 FPS, with 1% lows dipping below 30 FPS. So, if you have a CPU that's around this performance, your best bet is to play at lower frame rates. Let's start with the comparisons. And as usual, I will jump in if there is something important to note. The shadow quality setting is the most demanding setting in the game. In cities, the performance impact is not as big as when you're in other areas like rural areas or forests with lots of trees and vegetation, as that will kill your FPS. Indirect lighting really bothered me because I tested many scenes and I couldn't find any difference in graphics or performance. So. Let's assume that this setting is currently either broken or barely does anything noticeable. Therefore, it doesn't matter what option you set the setting to. I tested many different scenes and scenarios with the particle quality setting, looking at the environment, shooting guns, using explosives, and I didn't notice any changes in graphics or performance. But if you know what the setting changes, please tell us down in the comments below. Volumetric lighting probably has the second biggest performance impact after shadows and luckily this setting has almost zero visual difference between the options and a big difference in performance. The visual change is so small that I would recommend setting volumetric lighting to low to gain free FPS both indoors and outdoors where it's needed the most. Crowd density has a surprisingly very small performance impact, with only the 1% lows being slightly affected with the high setting. All the while the number of NPCs were noticeably increased, therefore I recommend setting this setting to high.
contact shadows adds very much needed detail to the scene. But in my testing, I found that medium, high and ultra basically look the same and I couldn't tell the difference between them. The performance is also identical between all the settings. Without a doubt, the most controversial and important setting in the game, upscaling. The game supports FSR 2, but does not include support for DLSS. But don't worry, because I have made a video that shows you how to install the DLSS mod into Starfield, which you can watch by clicking on the pop-up on the top right of the screen right now. One unusual thing that this game has about upscaling is that it doesn't use the regular quality settings that we are used to. Instead, it has a customizable render resolution scale that goes from 50 to 100%. But as I usually test the DLSS and FSR quality settings, which are set to 67% render resolution scale, I will use that number in this test. As this game is extremely GPU demanding, using upscaling is a must in my opinion. And as you can see, DLSS is much more stable than FSR 2 is. So if your GPU supports it, do yourself a favor and download and use DLSS. Variable ray cheating in this game is quite something because it's either so good that it has no visual impact or it's broken and doesn't work because the performance and graphics are exactly the same. So enable the setting just in case it works and gives you slightly better performance. Let's start with the max versus optimized performance comparison. In this GPU limited scenario, the RTX 3060 is getting between 17 and 18 FPS on max settings, that is with native TAA without upscaling. This just proves how awfully optimized this game is. Now with my optimized settings, you can see that the performance has over doubled, and the game is now actually playable without getting sick. And yes, before you say it, I know. Upscaling and DLSS played a major role in increasing the frame rate, but to be honest, it's actually needed in this game. Now let's move on to a more CPU limited scenario. In this heavily populated area, we can see that the frame rate has actually increased, but not quite as large as when we were GPU limited, but still. This performance increase is substantial, and if you can get 60 FPS or higher in this area, then you're probably too rich to be watching this video. Because this game is so unoptimized, only brute forcing it with expensive hardware will net you playable FPS. I think I heard that Starfield was in development for 7 years, and to be honest, I don't know what Bethesda were doing during those 7 years, probably working for 1 year on the game and
the other six. 